Due to the graphic nature of its content, listener discretion is advised. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air on land and sea. First to fight for On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Sebastian and Bennett sit down for a conversation. This is about you, right? I... I'm not sure. I was under the impression this was uh, an introduction to kind of both of us, to where we just have a discussion and and people see the opinions of the two less vocal. Even though I'm on a lot of episodes, I don't say a whole lot. And then also, you are like the voice in the shadows, you know, coming and, out. And, and I, I I'm not on a lot, but I say a lot. Right. And then also you direct the social media content and uh, orchestrate that madness. How is that? Well, I, I, I try to when I have internet connection. Yeah. But uh, they won't hook me up until uh, next Sunday, man, a week from today. What kind of craziness is that? Well, you know, it's one of those things we just got to roll with. I'm finding that, like, a lot of life post-military is that same rolling with it. I think that's one of the things that we can really draw upon is just rolling with it. Because, I mean, there's times where you're fucking police calling at 2 a.m. and you're just like, whatever. I'm just going to pick up little pieces of fucking trash. Whatever, you know? There's shitty parts, you know? Like, they're they're just there for everybody. I mean, life's no, you know, bundle of roses, but... We certainly have the opportunities to do good, and uh, that always ends up in a good day. But where where do you see, as we start growing, as the snowball starts, like, really spinning down the hill and gaining momentum, you know? Like, where do you see your role progressing and and hopefully flourishing? Uh, well, my role, my role, uh, I pretty much flood... Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm big into social media. I read Facebook a lot and I read a lot of articles. Basically I peruse Facebook almost all day, uh, even at work, uh, in between when I'm doing stuff, I pretty much, I'll pull up articles and that's pretty much what I do all day. Or I read about, I, I read a lot about the veteran, uh, entrepreneurial veteran space, I guess. Uh, I kind of like stalk everybody on Facebook. Um, So one of the big things that I like to do, and um, Michael can attest to this as well, is because I probably call him daily uh, or text or email him daily with all kinds of just random uh, shit from the veterans space. Um, Whether it's literally like, stalking Marty Scovland on Facebook or uh, Matt Best or, um, you know, the guys from Ranger Up. I I literally stalk these guys, so don't get creeped out, guys, but at any given moment, I'm probably reading either an article that you wrote, watching a movie that you guys made or something along those lines. Um, But that also goes for, like, Daryl Fusaro, Larry Broughton. Well, I'm sure they appreciate the reads and the uh, listens to all these different guys. Well, I I, I would hope so. It just kind of it's kind of an, a compliment to them because I, I you know we kind of have to look at them as uh, blazing the path for this kind of work. Right. I guess you could say uh, because they kind of have. I mean, they're all very successful. Um, they might not think so, but uh, the veterans looking out at the space. Oh, yeah think so you know so that's that's a lot of what i do and and you know what that will continue forever on our eyes and ears man and anything new like uh any kind of class or or uh presentation i i probably come up with at least one or two of those a week that can help guys in even if we don't know uh even if we can't attend on our own i usually try to put it up on either uh cigars and sea stories or or cross it over into blood stripes or 
professional development type stuff. And I like to put that out there and just put it out for the veterans listening, veterans and active duty military guys, just for their benefit. Because I like to connect people. I like to, you know, I want us as a community to better ourselves. So I, you know, that that's really my whole aim with all of it. And of course, down the road, I continue, I, I will continue to do that. I, you know, I, I don't really try to get into the political side of it. I, I try to get more into the, uh, uh, self help or, uh, you know, just so guys can become proactive and, and really go, Hey man, you know, that class might really help me or, or this information is awesome. So I, I definitely am gonna, I, I want to start posting that on my space on the, um, on our website as well as on Facebook and whatnot. Yeah. See, so, I mean, that just goes in an, another, another spoke in the wheel. I mean, we're really pushing this thing out in a lot of different Absolutely. directions, and uh, and there's a lot of traction being made. This is a little candid, Absolutely. candid um, shop talk, so to speak. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, I like to write, but I, I haven't been in a writing. Oh, if for me, it's either I'm um, I'm reading. And, and just absorbing information or I'm, or I'm putting it all out there. So it's almost like I go in waves where I'll, I'll write for a few months and then I'll read for a few months and I can start, I can kind of feel it starting to change over at this point. Uh, probably cause I've been in school. So I've been writing a lot for that. So it's kind of, uh, <laughs> I'm kind of like doing a changeover where I know I'll be putting a bunch of stuff out. So, you know, like blog type stuff and, just articles and like, you know, Hey guys, check yeah. this out type stuff. Uh, so I, I see that part partly where I want to go as well. Uh, just to kind of put my voice out there, um, you know, with, with, uh, written word. Um, but also, you know, to do as many, uh, of these shows as I can. Um, you know, just because uh, I got a lot of information yeah. to put out, you know. Well, that's so, I mean that's a hell of a lot of raw data. Uh, and, and 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 a lot of opinions right. too. So. <laughs> well, that's the great part is everyone everyone has their own like area where they get to voice exactly what they want, you know. And then there's some overlap. Yeah, man. But it's always a welcome overlap. Yeah, you know? that's what I was gonna say. I love it. Absolutely, dude. I, I love that. How it, how we do, it's, it's almost like, you know, it's exactly. like interlocking fields of fire, that. man. I, I love how, how literally our, our lanes just kind of lock together, you know, right. it's pretty cool. So. All right. Bennett, you still there? Uh oh, we lost him. Yeah. I don't know, man. I lost I lost my free McDonald's connection. Free McDonald's connection. So, nice. Yeah, whatever. So I have this, uh, this new place that I'm living, uh, and there's a little room. Uh, it's kind of like an inside storage unit, like a big closet, um, which I'm going to turn into a studio. So that's pretty cool. That's going to be awesome for, especially for it once is. you start getting, like your own segments in and and developing that Ab that voice absolutely, and that's going to be yet another voice bringing bringing value to this thing like consistently, you know. Yes, sir. I am very very excited about all of this. I mean, I wake up just ready to go. I mean, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta fight fear as it comes up, and you gotta ensure that you're staying the course. And that you're always putting your best foot forward. You know, it takes, I mean, I've, I didn't realize how long it took, but it takes a good amount of work to get a podcast really sounding okay. Yeah, but uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting a new appreciation for a lot of what goes into this type of thing. And it's really, it's really neat seeing the uh, job kind of unfold in front of you. It's like, as a need comes up, it's like, all right, got to fill that. But it's like, 
just keep doing that good. Don't don't get tired. Okay, so why why the core? Why the Marine Corps, Jocelyn? You know, it it was the idea of going to war. I I remember being always fascinated by it. I had a creek in my backyard when I was growing up and it went through the entire neighborhood. And I used to go in there with toy guns all the time, and that's all I would do is play war. And that was my entire childhood. And then uh, I got done with high school, and I was pretty much being a dickhead for three years, just fucking around, doing nothing really valuable at all. Just wondering why life wasn't being handed to me like a little chump, you know? Right. And then I was like, you know what? I got to do something hard. Like, I got to have some sort of rite of passage. Because I don't feel like a fucking man right now. And so I was like, what's the hardest thing I could do? But, I mean, that's one time I tell the story. But another time it would be, like, that genuine sense of, like, the awe of serving. You know, that... Holy crap, something way bigger than you. Like, like I can be part of this. Like, the prestige of wearing a uniform, you know? Like, that, I mean, that plays a role. But, I mean, it was always that, that allure for me. I don't know. I, that's the best way I could put it. And then, um, but I saw this guy walking out of an Army-Navy surplus store, and I was going in trying to find some, uh, like, tricolors to to wear going camping and feel like a badass and and then i just it just hit me like a lightning bolt just if not that guy and he has a, a gimp leg and he obviously seems like he wants to serve and you have two good legs and you're not and i was like okay yeah this equation doesn't make sense i'm, I'm going in so i went over to the recruiter and it was kind of funny. I uh, a little shout out to them being assholes. So I uh, I wanted to go infantry the whole time, and that's that's it. And uh, you know, I went in. I took the pre ASVAB like a little test thing that they have in their offices, and right. I just put A B C A B C A B C all the way through, and then I got like fifty five percent. <laughs> and uh, yeah, testament to the difficulty of that one, huh? But uh, they're like, all right, well, there's a lot of jobs you can do, and so we go into the ASVAB, and then, you know, I get I get fairly high marks, and they're like, holy crap, you could do anything. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna go into the infantry, right? And uh, and so they they kind of got mad because they were like, you know, we could really you could do anything. And I was like, the only way I'm signing the dotted line is if you, if, if I'm going infantry, like if not, I'll go somewhere else where they let me be in the infantry, like fucking a, like, right. right. And it was only cause there was no, there's no grunts at that recruiting. St- if there was a grunt there, it'd have been like, fuck yes. Get over here right now. Right. Like, let's do this. But you know, they're all posed. Isn't it, isn't it funny though? Isn't it funny though that you, some of the most intelligent people I've ever met uh, were girls. Oh, hell yeah. By choice. It's usually the ones by choice. And then, uh, well, the funny thing was they tried to slip it in behind, like, they tried to slip in uh, open contract because they knew I would just get gobbled up with those scores. And so they slipped in right. an open contract. And then, um, the la- like, one of the last days of boot camp, I don't know, team week or whatever. So I can't remember what the phase was or what was going on, but... You, uh, it was, it was when you were getting your orders and the drill instructor, he was just a a cook or something. He calls me out and he goes, UH, open contract. He's like, you're going to be a cook. I was like, uh, this recruit is supposed to be, uh, infantry. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. You're going to be a cook. Says open contract. (laughs) And then thank God my other drill instructor was a, a scout sniper. He comes right. fucking barreling across the fucking squad bay. And he's like, oh, hell no, this is not happening. So he just charges me over to this fucking corporal at a desk, some 
S shop in there, and he's like, you're changing this. And he's like, Staff Sergeant, I'm not allowed to. He's like, you're fucking changing it right now. And he's like, I Staff Sergeant, <laughs> and he changes it. Well, see, that's something that we have in common, actually. I went into the Corps as an open contract, too. Um, but by choice. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't really care. I was like, whatever. I, 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 I was like, I'll either be infantry or I'll be a cook. I mean, I wanted to be infantry, but I didn't really care. So it was one of those things. I mean, you know what I'm saying. It was just like, I just wanted to be a Marine. Yeah. So... It, it has its appeal all in its own. Right. Absolutely. But yet, it, it was kind of, it, that's a, re, like, that's a really meaningful moment, though. Like, my entire life would have changed if that guy hadn't been a scout sniper and just happened to have heard from across a squad bay. Because he was, like, his ears perked up, right. and he's like, oh, hell no, and he comes freaking barreling over. <laughs> So like you had a you had as a as you had a a cook, a scout sniper, and w- do you remember what your other drill instructors were? You know my senior, which is the only one whose name I remember is Staff Sergeant Jones. <laughs> yeah, he. Uh, I can't remember what he was, but. I think something something went down the last day of boot camp. He was not happy. Never saw him again. Yeah, really? it was it was bizarre. Never never seen him act like that. So I hope I hope huh. everything went down all right for him. Senior drill instructor, Staff Sergeant Jones, if you're out there, man. I hope everything went down all right from there. I don't know. So what what years did what year did you go to boot camp? Uh, October 26, 2004. Right, 2004. Yeah, I should I should have gone in a couple years earlier, but I was. Ah, well, that's fine. Whatever. Well, I just <laughs> I needed that time to mature. I think I think I was I was still too weak of a a person when I was just 18. Like I was I was behind the power curve big time. I think it would have crushed me. But I went through. I mean, I'm. I made it through. I think I did a pretty good job. I I made sergeant four years. But, right. I mean, that was kind of a miraculous thing. I, there should have been no way I was going to. But I still, I'm still proud I made it. But uh, what happened was I was a old school 0351, and then they started dividing things up between uh, 51s and 52s. So toes were getting the jabs and and... Because I was trained in the old way with javelins, smas, and uh, AT4s, and then a demo package, I got put as an 0352. And so my cutting score as a corporal like, was extremely high, but nowhere near picking up for a 51. And it was like I should have picked up like nine months ago as a 52. And then my promotion right. ceremony was awesome. It was absolutely priceless. So I go into the company office. I was uh, I can't remember who it was. Everything was kind of like pre-deployment for the guys that were going. And I was in the RBE at that point because I was just about to get out, like maybe three or four months later, maybe two months. Right. And, uh, and I was like, I went up to whoever the – gunny was or somebody i tracked down this guy that was going to be able to pull this off for me and uh and i was like look gunny this this has been going for two months i i should have picked up two months ago and it's just they've been fucking me over and he's like okay and so he's like you got your warrant and i hand it to him and then like some lieutenant is walking by like random random like boot lieutenant just butter bar just walking by comes over and he's like hey gunny what's up he's like stand here and he starts reading off the warrant <laughs> and this kid's just like oh shit and i was le- i was i almost i almost lost it because it was so fucking funny because he literally like right there he's just like yeah there's a lieutenant snatched him up the kid had no idea what he was doing that's awesome it was great 
That is awesome. So that was me getting promoted to sergeant. And then oh, I, I, I walked around like a dick, just like, yeah, I'm a fucking sergeant. Yeah. Like walking around. I'm a sergeant, bitch. Like not even like, I wasn't thrown in anybody's face, but I was definitely like, hey, check out my collar, motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was such a boot move, yeah. but you know what? It felt good. It felt really fucking good Whatever. to pick up, you know? That's awesome. So that was that that was a fun little story. But that yeah, um, that was the same battalion I was in with, good old Michael J. Penny, three seven. You know, yeah, three seven. Under uh, oh, a bunch of West Coast, a bunch of Hollywood Marines. You guys Hollywood are. Marine. Yeah, you know what? The the vast movie set that is Twenty Nine Palms. Right, like, exactly. I dare any Lejeune uh, Marine to complain. Compared to a 29 Palms Marine. It's just... You, you, oh, and you'll never hear me complain about it, ever. Oh, or, but, were you, you at know, a Lejeune when you were in... Just that, there's just that, yes, yes, yes. I'm the only one out of the three, uh, out of the four of us. Because mm. uh, Parkhurst is a uh, West Coast Marine, too. But, uh, yeah. From there, I, uh, I got out and... <laughs> Now, now, when you when you got out, though, where where did you go? Where did you go after you got out? Well, thankfully, my parents lived in Southern California, so it was just down the road. I uh, went and my wife and I stayed with them for a little bit while we were getting on our feet, and uh, I still had to wait. I don't know why my dumbass didn't extend, but I still had to wait a year until the. Uh, post 9-11 GI Bill kicked in and so I was just right. waiting and just like holding pattern and I was like all right well I'm gonna be hitting the books pretty hard so I don't want to get like a a really like in-depth job so I ended up being a Christmas tree guy at Lowe's nice it was actually really good it was it was the perfect job for me at the time because it it was a zero stress job and I just right. went in and I helped people get Christmas trees and I don't care who you are. Nobody goes and gets a Christmas tree in a bad mood. No, so very rarely, it was, I would it say. was a really good experience for me, like getting right out of the core and I was just like, what the like, oh crap, civilian life. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do that. And I, I ended up getting usually the evening shift. And so it was, it was really just chill, standing out, cutting Christmas trees, throwing in people's trucks. I mean, it was, That's awesome. it was perfect for what I needed at the time, looking back on it. Right. Um, from there, well, while I was still in school for uh, IT and network administration, I got a job working in the field and... Uh, started working there and what killed that entire thing was just the way that people treated each other and this really is the beginning of like why I believe and do what I do now like people overall treat you like shit so it's like fuck it I'm not doing that shit and uh, it, it really started wearing at me and I, I just couldn't handle it anymore so I uh Went back to school for fire science because I wanted to maybe be a firefighter. And uh, it seemed like it would be a really good path. It's a very, very hard man's path. And I, I appreciate those guys and what they do a lot. Um, when I got to the EMT school, like I got done with EMT school, like they were very candid about the liabilities involved. And, like, how people try to sue people for helping them and, like... Which is just asinine, but that's another story. If it's in the service of trying to help, yes, shit will go wrong, but you would be dead, so shut the fuck up. Yeah, I... Yeah. I can't handle that. I will not tolerate that kind of behavior from people, and so I couldn't... I couldn't live in an environment where you had to. So, yet again, I was like, well, fuck. Thankfully, uh, I was in 223 at the time at a... Port Wanimi and uh, weapons company there. Shout out to them. And uh, a buddy of mine, Taylor, he had gotten a job with uh, 
refrigeration company and uh, he was able to hook it up for me and they were very cool they had a really great military like program where they put you through their own training and like got you all the things you need to start and then gave you very good wages and treated me amazing but uh I just realized like it just wasn't my mission it wasn't it wasn't a passionate drive of mine and I'm such a fucking idealistic asshole now like I I have to live a life that's worth living to me and that wasn't at all and I'm thankful for those guys that are willing to put up with what they do and keep the rest of us running because that is literally vital infrastructure kudos to those guys too um but yeah I found myself just broken and uh I just didn't give a fuck. I, I, was, I was just done. I couldn't handle living for no reason. And uh, I'd been talking to Mike on and off about his endeavors with uh, his past company. And then uh, we started jiving on some ideas. Uh, I can't even remember what at this point. The tipping point was like coming out here. It was really, that was, that that enabled us to have that, I don't know, face-to-face -face required to get a lot of these things, like, actually going, you know. Within a few days, we had gotten the office space up and running, and we were able to uh, start collaborating. And then also start setting right a lot of the, like, negative ways of thinking, like, that, that you just carry in this fear that you always carry around because of how we've become as a society. And that was, that was the big thing. I couldn't, I, I will not deal with that anymore. It's beneath us as a people. That's why I need everybody to understand. It is beneath us to fear. We're not supposed to. It's such a wasteful emotion. It, re it really is. But really, like, like that's, that's what we've been able to have, those hard conversations. Like, really, like, looking in, like, what, what am I looking to do? What am I looking to get out of life? It's like it's it's really not worth it if I can't do it with people I give a fuck about. And it's not worth it if what I'm doing is not worth giving a fuck about. And I have to be able to let it go at a moment's notice and flood around something else because it's an incredibly dynamic field. I mean, it gives every bit of that like combat rush except without Without danger spawning it, it's more that unknown that's always there. You know, it's like, yeah, you're out on your own. Good luck. All right, well, I'm going to go add value, and, uh, and that's that. How, how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to work in business with as many veterans as I can to ensure that everybody's plugged in where their strength is able to be highlighted. Oh, well, I'm really good at this. Great. We know this project over here, and they're itching for a guy just like that. And as we start knowing people, and as we start, like, just putting this out, like, it's not tooting my own horn, because it's, that's just what we're doing. And I'm, like, we're by no means perfect individuals at Cigars and Sea Stories. Uh -huh. But we do try. And we're putting everything into this that we possibly can. But also, I need people to understand, like, we will say some stupid shit that you don't agree with. We will, we will make points that you might not understand or that you might not agree with. But we can all react in a little bit more mature of a fashion than we have. And, and we, we welcome the debate. Yes, so if, if you don't believe if you don't agree with it or you think that we're sounding ridiculous or frou frou or whatever the hell you want to call it, that's fine. Come on. Bring your voice up and let's debate this. Right. That's it. And and as Marines coming in, when you when you get a hold of us or as veterans calling or trying to get a hold of us with these different things, like we value what you bring to the table. Like let us know your perspective, you know? I mean, hell, like, I don't know everything. But if we have the grace and pride dropping enough with each other, like, we can walk up and, and gain that knowledge. 
And, I mean, that's what the veteran community does best. There's no real walls. It's like, hey, you do that? Can you help me with this? Because I do this. It's like, yeah, sure. You know, like, that's what veterans do, really. Adapt adapt, and overcome, yeah. baby. And you can't do that by yourself. And as a team, you know, it, that's just the way it is. I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, we have – we. We really have a nice structure going. I mean, we've got we've got four points looking out board, interlocking fields of fire. Oh, stand by. Mike locked himself out. <laughs> Coming. Good job, Michael J. Penny. Mr. I want to go outside and smoke cigars and lock myself out. So Mike <laughs> just asked me uh, to elaborate my role. Your role, yes. Sebastian. Yes, sir. What is your role uh, as you see it with Cigars and Sea Stories? Well, that's a good question, Bob. <laughs> I I control the content that we put out. Um, I ensure that what we're trying to say is said and that we have a good flow. I work directly with uh mike on that we have a good flow of episodes good style of episodes different types of content coming out and i i manage that process including uh getting it mastered outside of the house and then having it come back and get it up online um and then we have a lot of interlocking fields with me and mike in that regard um and then I also do some stuff with uh, blood stripes, albeit not nearly as much as uh, as Mike does. So yeah, I I guess my official title would be uh, director and content manager of Cigars and Sea Stories, uh, contributor to Blood Stripes, and uh, entrepreneur, cock strong warrior with a full body heart on. You know, I mean, humble, <laughs> humble, I, humble title. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> well, let's see. Go ahead. So some of the cool ways that we have interlocking fields of fire are the different missions that we're all wanting to support. Um, when you guys, you know, talk about Warrior Hall and you guys are getting that set up and we st see that start to progress that is going to be huge for the guys that are able to go in there, you know? I mean, yep. that will be an outlet that everyone will truly, truly appreciate. Yes, definitely. And then also, I mean, Mike, what he's trying to do with giving other guys that either have gotten out or are just about to get out that hope that, look, you can, you can step out and you don't have to go and be part of just like a workforce like you can you can forge your own path in fact we're we're trained for it now sebastian let me ask you a question so do you have any other like things on your horizon or uh like interests other than than working with us idiots doing this podcast and and website stuff do you have any other stuff going on or, or that down the road you you see yourself possibly getting into aside from that i i have some ideas in uh in hvac that i think would be helpful to a lot of people and so i plan on uh i've already built some proof of concepts but uh i need to build actual prototypes and see like if the proof of concept in a whole model works. Um, I'm anticipating it does, but you know, I've got to get through some of that stuff. Uh, so those right. ideas are still swirling around in the back. So once I get some capital for that, I'll be able to push forward and uh, start building a team around going forward with that. And then also, I mean, I'll have all of us to, that'll be like, Oh yeah, let's build into that. And then, like the entire network I know is just going to be like, all right, cool. Who do we know? All right, let's, let's go. Let's yeah. do this. <laughs> and so it, that I'm really looking forward to, and that's going to put me in parts of the country that I really like around like Colorado, 
uh, for for many portions of it. And it's a, it's a beautiful place. It's very dry, but it's a beautiful place. Right. Like with every breath, it tries to suck the moisture out of you and kill you. But it's a beautiful place. <laughs> it is gorgeous, man. I love Colorado. I just you know I would just go out in my Jeep, me and my dog, big old Rottweiler, jump in the back, and uh, we head out in the middle of nowhere. And it should be me and him just chilling out, having a stogie, drinking a beer, looking up at the stars. Those those moments where you get to set your head straight. Yeah, man. Love it. Good stuff. Love it. But, uh, well, no, I mean, you know, the good news about this mission is that it's unending. Like, you can always find somewhere to bring value. Right. And Def- as yeah, you definitely. gain contacts and you start building that rapport or trying to build rapport, I mean, not everyone's going to like you. Not every situation goes perfectly. And I find myself doing just as much judging and as, as I think is happening to me when I do do it. And so, I mean, like, it's really, again, overcoming that fear. Like, hey, everyone's here on the same team. Like, let's just... Let's just work. Let's get shit done, you know? Yeah, man. And it never fails. Like, everyone has always been perfectly gracious and willing to work out. Willing to work out. Willing to help, you know? Willing to uh, to put that in. So it's it's a much appreciated boost every time they do. So. I, don't, I keep thinking I'm losing track and not making sense. I think I'm senile. I think I have Alzheimer's. No, man. No, man. You, you're You're putting it out there. It's good stuff. It's all good stuff. I really do want to give people hope again. And not from me, but from the idea that is America. We do it right. We do it better. We do it honest, clean, and good. Like, it's simple. It's practical. And it truly harnesses the creative potential of every person operating within it. And it's, it's beautiful. And so... We're just going to do business right. And it just makes me fucking just... Excited. I just... It's a very narrow path you got to stay on, but it's a sure path. It's like every step, once you put your foot down, you know that it's a solid step. You know, when you walk away from the table, you know everyone knows that they're going to come out with exactly what they wanted out of it. You know that everyone is is being fulfilled in exactly what way they need it. You you can't go wrong, and it's not not to say every endeavor will be successful. It's to say that you start having enough grace for you, yourself and others to let shit go wrong, and not count people out. It's like yeah, people can fail like thirty times. Who cares? Get back on that horse. Like let's do this. Let's let's live life as a community, and let's actually. Like, enjoy it instead of creating this fear-mongering, disgusting system we have now. It really repulses me, and it makes me sick that my countrymen are exposed to the type of fear and the amount of fear they are. All the time. Yeah, it's it's consistent. Like, the freaking uh, news cycles nowadays are just ridiculous. Like, I, I can't even watch the news. Any, any news. Uh... You know, I, I, I can't, I literally cannot turn on the television and watch news because it makes me sick. It truly is infuriating. Right. Ugh. No, it's just, it's, it's a little asinine. The, uh, the, I, I mean, and, and you got to look at it too, like you were talking about, uh, and it all comes around. It's just straight up fear mongering, you know, Yep. that happens. It happens daily on on news that used to be you know like halfway decent journalism now it's just all about drumming up fear and um sex drugs and rock and roll i guess is what you would say you know that at least that's what like my parents would say you yeah know? no it, it, uh, it's true and, and it's all about that you know sex cells violent cells uh you know, it's just ridiculous, and I just don't get it. Well, right, like um, who in leadership thought, you know what we should do? We should make all the people terrified and 
not capable. That's going to really further our fucking nation. Like who? Well, oh. but they don't care. It's it's the uh, it's the uh, sheeple mentality yeah. is, is, is what they want. Yeah. And it's like one of my favorite things is the uh, there's George Carlin, man. He gives a great monologue and I actually posted it, I think, on our Facebook page not that long ago. Uh, and I'll post it again when I get home. Nice. Uh, that uh, just kind of spells it out, man. It's it's nuts the way that that the world's going right now, and uh, I I can't even believe right I, like seriously look at the uh, I mean look at look at the political arena right now. First off, why are we running for president two years out? You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. And why are there 16 major party candidates for like the Republican Party? That's just crazy to me. Um. I I don't know. Man. It's it's it it truly does show a divided nation. Um everyone's going to be groping for some semblance of safety and comfort in this and I'm afraid that they're just they're going to get the wool pulled over their eyes again. Uh, and you know what? I we 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 know it's gonna we know that's what's going to happen. And it's unfortunate that you just see it coming. Because at the end of the day, 99% of the politicians do not care about us. They just don't, period. You know, and I don't like, I don't like getting overly political about anything, but that just becomes more apparent to me every single day. Yeah. Um, you know, they really just don't care. So again, <laughs> I'll post that. Again, whenever I get home, it's hysterical. It's a video, so. But that's where we really do, we do have an opportunity is just to show everybody. Show everybody, like, again, like, hey, all anyone has to really do is, is come back to this notion of, like, treating one another respectfully all over the place. Right, like, right. Realize that you have made the exact same mistake you're pissed at this other person about at least a hundred times in your life. And sometimes it was for better reasons. Sometimes it was for worse, but just get over it, you know? Right. And a lot of these different things, like they're all also fear based, you know, and that, that same fear mongering and thought shaping or whatever you want to call it is, is what we have to overcome. I guess, I guess I'm kind of sick of people living the life that, you know, like they don't, they think that they live outside the boundary of rules. You know what I mean? And that yeah. th because it's like everyone's so detached from one another that they look and they judge and they make all these assumptions about everyone. But yet, hey, man, guess what? You're part of this mix, too, brother. You know, you you're living the same life as everybody else. But it's like, uh, you know, people aren't neighbors anymore. Uh, everything's done on a. I mean, and, and this is coming from the guy who peruses social media like crazy. <laughs> but uh, it's like everybody lives at arm's length. There's no uh, relationships anymore, you know, yeah. whether it's business, whether it's uh, just being friends, man, you know, making make, you know, treating people as you want to be treated, I guess, is, is a really good way to put it, you know, right. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it seems like we've lost focus on that, um, and lost focus on, on what we find important. Because I've noticed most people only judge a person's value by their monetary status, or by some measure of, of that success. And it's the only measuring stick we have, aside from titles, which are strictly designed to earn you more money right and when that's the only measuring stick then suddenly people who are very unadmirable in character and will do anything to take advantage of situations become very powerful it's saddening to see people do that to each other but just like any dark room you know you can turn on a light and uh and it's undeniable when you turn on the light and the ro the cockroaches scatter yeah, and so I'm not overtly worried 
about that. The fear that I confront myself with and try to overcome every day is that I don't want to fuck up. Like, this is a pretty heavy fucking message to bring out to the world, you know? And we really love taking people down when they're trying. And I do... I do have apprehensions about going forward in the face of that, but when I really look at the big picture, even if I get fucking hammered by everybody, if just a few people got that little message, that the idea that, yeah, you, you know, we really can treat each other better. Look at, look at what being on each other's side. I mean, people used to be what veterans are, you know? Look at each other and be like, hey, we're Americans, we can get this done. Now it's like, hey, we're veterans, we can get this done. Right. It's not national pride just saying we're Americans. It's that because we can unite under that as a people, we can operate together with that same uh, barrier removal that veterans have. You know what I mean? And uh, patriotism goes a long way to do that. However, that is a very strong force you can often blind us to what's going on behind our backs, especially when we're trying to forward this idea of freedom, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's a very, like, it's a daunting task we truly have if we're going about the mission exactly as detailed, and, and I don't mean that in a uh, foolish way, but I'm I'm going to put everything I have into it. Because that's yeah. the only way you can operate here. And that's why it's so exhilarating, too, is because of that finality behind it. It's, it's great. It's, it's on that edge again. But this time, it's, it's hearts and minds. It's, it's, I want to make sure my people aren't afraid anymore. Yeah, man. And, and just su- succeed and bring as many people along with us as we can. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for listening to this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories. Please, please, don't be a dick. Join the Cigars and Sea Stories Facebook group and follow us on Twitter at Cigars and Sea. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Your comments do make the show. We're always looking for your input. Tell us how we can do better. And as always... Cigars and Sea Stories. Yeah. On this episode of Cigars and Sea Stories, Bennett Tatton sits patiently while Sebastian runs his mouth. Man, my freaking thing's going in and out here. <laughs>